So the last two spaces that we'll talk about is the space that's located below the tongue. Now, I kind of mentioned this before, is that when we do the head and neck, we take the same piece of anatomy and give it different names. What is Latin for tongue? Latin for tongue is lingua. And what's Greek for tongue? Well, Greek for tongue is glosses. So when we talk about the spaces, we're going to refer to this as the sublingual space. If I was giving a talk on the oral cavity, I would refer to this as the floor of the mouth. So in general, I use those terms interchangeably. So when we look at the sublingual space, it's formed laterally by the mandible. And this little ridge right here is called the myeloid line. The muscle that goes from the myeloid line to the hyoid bone is called the mylohyoid muscle. Then you have a muscle that runs from the hyoid bone up to the tongue. This is called the geniohyoid muscle. I should I'm sorry about that. This is the hyoglossus muscle. Sorry, from the hyoid bone to the tongue, the hyoglossus muscle. And these muscles that go from anterior to posteriorly, it sort of forms this fan-shaped structure. This is the genioglossus muscle. So again, glossus is Greek for tongue, and we use that for the muscles. So the anatomy here is the mylohyoid muscle is here. This is the sublingual gland. This is Warthin's duct, which communicates as the duct for the submandibular gland. This is the, uh, the excuse me, the lingual nerve. This is the hypoglossal nerve. Here's the hyoglossus muscle, and there's the lingual artery. So these are all components of the sublingual space. So this is half of the sublingual space. Realize that there's a mirror image on the other side. So this is why this muscle is sometimes called the mylohyoid sling. So when I think of the sublingual space, <clears throat> excuse me, I always think of my famous teacup. So the rim of the teacup is formed by the mandible. The wall of the teacup is formed by the mylohyoid muscle. The base of the teacup is formed by the hyoid bone. And then everything in the teacup is located in the sublingual space. So what are some common pathologies that involve the sublingual space? Well, the most common tumor that you'll end up seeing is pure and simply squamous cell carcinoma of the floor of the mouth. So this is just a classic example here of an aggressive mass involving the floor of the mouth. Again, it's nonspecific. This could be squamous cell carcinoma. It could also be a minor salivary gland tumor. I'm not sure. But because squamous cell carcinomas comprise about 95% of tumors, if I had to guess, that's why I always put my money on. Here's an example here of a floor mouth as abscess. This is a sublingual space abscess. Notice how it's medial to the mylohyoid muscle. The key thing here is when you see something like this, always look at your bone algorithms because the majority of sublingual space abscesses are going to be odontogenic in origin. And in this case, the, abs the origin of this was this rotten tooth right here. And if you look closely, you can also see sclerosis here of the mandible. So this is chronic and acute osteomyelitis that resulted in not only the fluid collection here, but if you look closely, there's a little bit of air here as well, too. When we talk about fluid collections involving the sublingual space, if it's anterior and midline, this is a classic epidermoid. And then if we see a cystic lesion that's located off midline, notice how it's lateral to the hyoglossus muscle, medial to the mylohyoid muscle, and in close proximity to the sublingual gland, we can get a ranula. And ranula is basically a congenital obstruction of the sublingual gland. So when you see something like this, if it's anterior and midline, epidermoid, lateral, ranula, and remember, we just talked about the oropharynx. So the other cystic lesion that we talked about was a cyst right here at the tongue base in foramen cecum. And remember, that would be a thyroglossal duct cyst. But because we're talking about the sublingual space, that's why we're focusing on the epidermoid and the ranula. <clears throat> 